is oriented today, as I speak to you, to the experience of communion understood mainly as togetherness that leads to friendship by means of co-sharing something, like a feeling, a situation, an ideal, a desire. The Latin word communio, communis, defines aspects like a community, mutual participation, association, sharing, fellowship, and of course, communion. In a more simple manner, a union or unity that is co-experienced by people. In this sense, I believe that the highest form of communion is represented by the relationship of friendship. And towards this ideal of relationship, should a religious community, in my opinion, aspire, especially the Christian one. Why the Christian one? Well, because mainly this is what Jesus Christ taught his disciples and followers. And this is the tradition from the grounds that I speak to you today. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. And ending this speech, he will assert that I speak to you as my friends. Because now I have told you my intentions, my thoughts and my plans. And you are no longer my servants, you are my friends. And this is what Jesus is saying. The wish was that the later formed Christian community and church to be one that valued friendship even more than life, that had the love for others as friends understood as main ideal and direction. As a Christian, as someone who goes to church on Sundays and on different occasions, I have to confess, as a personal fault, that I have not totally experienced friendship in the community and I dare to say that I might not be the only one. Would I lay down my life for the Christians present at the Mass in my community? The people that I should see as my friends? I am not very keen on doing that. Would I do it for my friends or a friend that does not belong to this community? Maybe, depending on the circumstances. So this is where the secular enters the sea the earthly, the worldly, the temporal affairs, cares and temptations that what is transitory and has no substance over than the one of opportunity, interest, context and circumstance. For a Christian, what is secular should be synonym, uh, synonym with estranged. At least this is what Giorgio Gamben tells us when defining the Greek word parekousa as something or someone who dwells, who temporarily inhabits the place because he's exiled, because he's a conqueror, or because he's a stranger in a strict opposition with the citizen and the rights he possesses by living in a certain place, the one that is katoikein or citizen. Paroikein, continues Agamben, to live as a stranger is the correct word to define the dwelling of the Christian in this world and his experience with the messianic time. Starting to live according to Katoikusa as a citizen with complete rights in this world where one does not belong, to make a pact with the world so that one may live here with all the rights included represents a betrayal of one's righteous heavenly citizenship. And that is the beginning of one's process of secularization, a pact compromise with the mundane. When the members of the church live as earthly citizens, and I'm not referring here to political citizenship as the common interpretation of the word says it, in this world, the church fails to experience the messianic time, not a chronologically determined time, but a qualitative transformation of the time that is experienced. Paul is the first of the apostles that describes in detail the structure of the messianic time that is totally different from the apocalyptical one. Beware because messianic time represents the relationship that every moment has with the ending of time and eternity, and not the ending of time itself. The way in which men establish a relationship with the ending of time and the beginning of eternity. In other words, by analogy, how do I approach death? How do I approach my own ending? 
I get uh, chills and thrills all over my spine when I think that one day these hands and these legs will rot and they will no longer exist, that they will rot in a coffin. Do I completely understand this experience? I don't think so. Messianic time is the time that remains between Christ's resurrection and the ending of time. But how does one experience and lives the messianic time? Through a radical transformation of the representation and experience of the time that it is lived. Messianic time does not represent a different time, but the inner transformation of chronological time. And the church as parochia, living according to parousia, may and can only live inside this messianic time. But how does the church experience life in this sense? Well, a French theologian was ironically saying that Christ was announcing the kingdom, but then the church arrived instead. Bittersweet, because these words reflect the church as a secular institution, as a citizen of the world, and not as a community of Christian friends living in communion as Christ desired it. Gamben affirms that we may not and we are not allowed in a certain way to denounce the church, the compromise that it made with the world, with that what is secular. The church has now in the messianic time the primary role of reading and interpreting the signs of the messianic time in order to live correctly the chronological <coughs> and secular time. That is to recognize the means, the proper means of salvation. Two contrary forces are disputing supremacy on the battlefield of history after the fall of man. Tokatehon, that one delays the second coming of the Messiah, the secular law of the state, and the church that has a singular objective, salvation, a finite economy that will end when time will end. The human community, says Agamben, survives only when these two polar forces are simultaneously present and establish a dialectical relationship. But the problem of our contemporary times is that the tension between these two forces has been exhausted, that they have made the compromise of peace. If the church abandons its duty of feeling the ending of time and living properly that ending, the secular society will confiscate the experience and transform it from an authentic communion of friendship into a paranoid experience of awaiting the disaster of finitude without any salvation. There is no legit power on earth. This is what Agamben affirms, and the argument for this is the total domination of the judicial and economical over human relationship, relationships, marked by a confusion between that what one believes, hopes, loves, says or does, reflecting not just a crisis of the state, but also a crisis of the church. Because the church may not exist as an institution in the world, only if it maintains its non-mediated relationship with its own ending in time. Agamben continues asserting that according to Christian theology, there is only one institution based on justice that has no ending or interruption, and that is hell. <laughs> hell because the church is neither a stock market nor a court. The nowadays political model that pretends an infinite economy of the world is infernal. And if the church fails to completely assume its relationship with parikia, with its own exile in the world, it will lose itself in the separate If the church does not assume its messianic time, the risk is that it will fail in the ruin that threatens every other government and institution on earth. That is living the chronological secular time does not, not presume the existence of an ending of time. There is no such thing as an infinite or eternal church. Although the church as a community will last forever in patria, in the kingdom of heaven. Communion and community imply a common way of life, sharing a life together. I spoke about friendship and I believe that the best definition of friendship may be found in Aristotle. Friends share nothing but their lives, their experience of being friends. Friendship shares the fact of mere existence and the object that is shared is life itself. They do not share birth, origin, law, utility, interest, space, or taste. They share their own lives. And that happens only by the means of living a life together, of co-sharing a life in a communion, as going on name of ideas and thoughts. Animals hunt and graze together. 
Men share ideas and thoughts, not just food, whether it is spiritual or material one. Friendship extracts one from the world, the secular, and offers one a piece of eternity. It means to experience eternity in time, heaven, heaven during one's lifetime. And as I consider to end my presentation, uh, that a friend of mine, the fox from The Little Prince says, and that uh, the relationship of becoming one's friends is the similar of uh, taming an animal. And she says, you become responsible forever for what you have tamed. I have to assert that you have definitely tamed me today. Thank you very much. <laughs>